What's up, comic book fans? It's the Emerald Enthusiast, the co-host of the Emerald Echo Podcast. Here with a look at the Spin Master Flash Movie 12-inch action figure of Batman. Collectors are excited about Flash Movie merch hitting the shelves, and I am excited about the 1989 version of Batman returning to the silver screen. So with no further ado, let's get a closer look at the package details. On the bottom front, we see the Flash Movie logo. On the side, we see the DC Comics logo. You can see the figure pretty well through the bubble on each side. We get product details on the bottom, and you can see the top of the figure through the bubble on the top. And here's a look at the back of the package. On the back top, we get a look at the other 12-inch movie figures that are available from Spin Master. If you've seen my other reviews on Spin Master, you know that I like this basic packaging from the company. You can clearly see the figure within, and I really appreciate that. There's a lot of good sculpting, it seems, and I really like the return of the yellow oval. But with all that being said, now it's time to bust this figure out of the package and see what's inside. And here we see Batman 89 out of the package and ready to rumble. I would have loved an action figure like this in 1989. And I think that veteran fans and children alike will be very happy with this figure. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at the loose details now. Let's start with a look at the lower body. And the figure is sturdy. That's always a huge plus. Here's a closer look at the boots. And you can see all of the sculpting detail. The figure is lightweight, by the way. That's probably how... Spin Master was able to keep the price down, one of the ways anyway. But they're sculpting at the top of the boots. And this really looks superb. The musculature on the figure is excellent. You can definitely see that here with the calf muscles. Yet Spin Master has still managed to make this look like body armor. The figure has been sculpted in such a way that it looks like segmented pieces that have been fused together. You can see the wrinkles that have been sculpted into the boots. This is really solid work. Let's have a look at the torso. And the body mold is far superior to a lot of 12-inch figures that are put out these days. There's no absence of sculpting here. You can see the individual muscle groups. And I just can't say enough good things about this chest symbol. The paint applications are spot on. It looks exactly the way that it should look. I did notice that the belt is not painted. I thought that it should be a gold color, but then I looked at some of the newer McFarlane figures from the Flash movie, and the belt is black. So perhaps that's not a mistake. This might be a newer version of the Batman suit. Look at all this sculpting on the back. You can see the various sections here. Again, it looks like body armor. Spin Master really deserves credit for such a level of detail on this figure. I also have to say that I am really pleased with this cape. Now obviously it's not as heavyweight as it needs to be for movie accuracy, but it still looks really good. It's not that gauzy transparent material that's often used for these types of figures. And it also hangs from the figure really well. It doesn't seem like something that will crease easily. Now we'll have a look at the arms. And you can see there's a single jointed elbow here. I really like the way that the gauntlets look. That's some really magnificent sculpting. Both of the hands are gripping hands, as you can see. And I really didn't expect anything like an alternate set of hands for a figure at this price point, but some type of accessory would have been nice, like a batarang or just a rope. But as I move these around, it's really difficult to find areas to criticize. These are really well done. Now let's look at the head sculpt. And I am thoroughly impressed here. First of all, it seems like the cowl has been layered over the cape. And that gives this figure an element of realism. 
I really appreciate that. And just like with the torso, there's plenty of detail on the back of the cowl here. You can see all of these lines that have been sculpted in. I'm very impressed with the way the ears look. Also, the eyes don't look lifeless, and that's impressive, as well as the fact that the skin tone looks realistic. And some collectors will be very impressed by how much this looks like Michael Keaton. You can definitely see his mouth and jawline represented here. In terms of articulation, there's a single jointed knee, and that allows you to get the figure into this type of pose. The hip joint rotates. That's really impressive. So you can actually get the figure into a full split. And again, that's very impressive. There's no articulation in the torso, but there is rotation here at both wrists. The shoulder joints allow you to raise and rotate the arms back this far. So if you want to have him in a gliding pose, you have that option. Again, he has single jointed elbows. You can see that represented here. You can close his arms in this much, so I appreciate that. And the shoulder joints allow for 360 degrees of rotation. In terms of the head, you can get the figure to look side to side easily, but unfortunately, that's the extent of the articulation. The head wiggles up and down just a little, but there's not much beyond that. I certainly hope you have enjoyed this review. If so, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for some articulation shots. And also remember to catch me on Multiverse Musings, the vidcast, which is available right here on YouTube. And I'll be back with more comic book related content soon. But until we meet again, this has been the Emerald Enthusiast. And thanks for watching.